Well, hi there. This is a rabbit. And with Easter right around the corner, rabbits are about to become really popular pets. You know, for, for a few weeks. And then will come the time of great abundance for people with big snakes. Because rabbits are a really cute gift idea for Easter morning. But a lot of people quickly discover that owning a rabbit is a more serious and intense commitment than are the chocolate variety. And after all of the candy and eggs are long gone, it's still there, being a rabbit, when all you really wanted was a visit from the Easter Bunny. But rabbits are really cool. And one of the few things that completely surprised me during my undergraduate in zoology was learning that rabbits are not rodents. I always thought they were. After all, they have the big, continuously growing incisors of rodents, followed by a gap called a diastema, just like rodents. They are the same size as many rodents, but they're not rodents? Nope. Close relatives, but not rodents. Rabbits, including hares, and pikas all form a distinct group from the rodents called the lagomorphs which can be somewhat easily distinguished from rodents by both the color and number of incisor teeth that they possess. Rodents have a single pair of upper incisors that are orange on their outermost surface. Lagomorphs, on the other hand, have not one pair, but two pairs of upper incisors, with the shorter pair located directly behind the first, and called clipping teeth, as the lower incisors slide behind the first pair and then make contact with the second pair, making them extremely good at clipping vegetation. They also do not have an orange outer surface. And lagomorphs have fur on the bottom of their feet instead of pads. Now earlier, I referred to hares and other rabbits. I say this because hares are right in the middle of the rabbit family, the family Leporidae, with some rabbits being more closely related to hares than they are to other rabbits. So the difference between rabbits and hares is not ancestry. True hares, which includes rabbits like jackrabbits, are born precocial, meaning that they are large and well-developed at birth, like chickens, whereas rabbits are born altricial, meaning they are small and fairly helpless at birth, like robins. If you get a rabbit, it's very unlikely to be a hare. But is it likely to be a good pet? And is the Easter Bunny the best pet mammal for you? To help you figure this out, we're gonna have to score the rabbit based upon our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the rabbit a score of two out of five. There are two things that are extremely, extremely important to remember about rabbits. First, they are not ferrets. And second, everything eats them, including ferrets. So you can't treat them like a ferret. And I mean that in every way possible. I'll start with the fact that they are not ferrets. They are not stinky slinkies. <laughs> rabbits have very fragile spines. The fact is that rabbits have very dainty skeletons in general. If I had a rabbit and a cat that were the same size, the rabbit skeleton would only weigh about 60% of what the cat skeleton would weigh. And the spine, particularly the lumbar vertebrae of the lower back, are very prone to damage. For this reason, it is very important if you ever lift a rabbit to ensure that you support the entire weight of the rabbit's body, never allowing weight to be supported by the spine. You also need to ensure that you keep the spine straight at all times. Don't allow their hindquarters to dangle and do not pick them up by the scruff. Even babies are not carried this way by their mothers. Always support both their front and back simultaneously in a straight line. This is to prevent a broken back. But it's worse, because everything eats them. The only things that would ever handle a rabbit in nature are probably working on eating it. So they are likely to do everything that they can to get away. Run, kick, claw, bite, fight. That can hurt you, but did I mention that they have dainty, fragile little skeletons and weak backs? Okay, well, in case you missed that, they do. And a frantic kick, or especially a fall, can break their backs. And restraining them forcefully can only make this worse. I suppose in the end, it's just better to leave a rabbit on the ground. That's what their moms do. But if you need to pick up a rabbit, 
it can be done. As previously mentioned, you will need to support all of their weight and keep their spines straight. But you also need to do it in such a way that your rabbit feels that it is not about to be eaten. And the best way seems to be to build a great deal of trust with your rabbit and then handle it like a football. Now I'm gonna do my best to demonstrate this football hold, but frequent viewers to this channel will know that my arms don't turn as far over as those of you know, most people, so I can't do it as well as you likely could. I also can't touch my shoulders, but I can put sunscreen on my whole back, so it isn't all downside, just mostly, and my wife finds my slight disability to be hilarious. But anyway, this is my best demonstration of how to handle a rabbit should you need to do so. Remember, this should only be attempted after spending considerable time building trust with your rabbit. So the first thing you'll need to do generally, and Pops is such a good sport that he doesn't need this too much, but a lot of times you might need to kind of keep your rabbit in one place for a second. You can do that kind of by placing a hand over the top of their shoulders. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna scoop a hand underneath their chest. And then you can lift their chest, but be careful not to lift their hindquarters off the ground because you don't want their hindquarters being supported only by their spine. At that point, you kind of scoop underneath, scoop under their little bum and pick them up. And then you flip them out away from yourself, keeping your hand under their bum, and you just sort of tuck their little head under your arm like this and carry them like a football. And this seems to be the best and safest way. You'll have a nice straight spine. They're fully supported from below. It feels like a, a sheltered kind of safe environment. And uh, you've got a free hand should you need to interact with anything else. So this is the rabbit football hold. And it is probably the best way to carry your rabbit around should you need to carry it. This rabbit is Pops, and he belongs to my sister-in-law, Moana. And he is a very trusting and sweet little rabbit. Don't expect all rabbits to be this easy to handle. And don't try it until the rabbit can be handled without attempting to flee from you or fight back. In a nutshell, rabbits can be handled, but only when necessary and with great care. Do not treat them like ferrets. And of course, uh, you could be allergic. They can scratch, and they can deliver a most terrible bite. And if your rabbit is scratching or biting, well, you shouldn't be attempting to handle it anyway. You have more trust to gain, you silly ferret. Just a couple of little things to add here at the end of handleability uh, that I kind of thought about not adding, but there are a couple of ways that people apparently often pick up rabbits really wrong, in addition to just letting parts of their body dangle. One of them is picking them up by the ears, apparently. Uh, don't do that. Uh, also, don't fire them out of a cannon. I don't, I don't know how many things I need to tell you not to do, but don't pick a rabbit up by the ears. Uh, another thing is people often like to roll them onto their backs and they will freeze up and they're, they seem like delightful little babies that, uh, you know, they seem calm. They are not calm. Rabbits freeze as a way of avoiding predators. Uh, it, it's something they do when they're very, very afraid. And studies have shown that their cortisol levels are skyrocketing. So they are terrified while they're on their backs. So don't flip them on their backs. Hold them like a football or don't hold them at all. When it comes to care, we give the rabbit a score of three out of five. When it comes to owning a rabbit, you always need to be thinking about protecting their spine and their gut. Rabbit gut health is everything. If there is anything to be learned from Aesop, it is that rabbits are just fast motion cocky tortoises. Specifically, they are just fast motion cocky sulcata tortoises. And they need a really similar diet, just with much more regularity. Tortoises can go a very long time without food. Rabbits need food coursing through their digestive tracts at all times. Rabbits are mammals, which means that they burn a ton of energy just to maintain their body temperatures. This is something that tortoises just don't understand. But they still eat grass and other plants that have fairly inaccessible sources of energy locked up in cellulose and other complex carbohydrates that we call fiber which is hard to break down for energy. In fact, in some cases, one pass through the old digestive tract will not be enough, but we'll get to that later. The reality is that when you eat a food from which it is difficult to extract energy and you simultaneously use a lot of energy, you need to process a lot of food. So rabbits are adapted to processing food all of the time and having a lot of indigestible carbohydrates, fiber, going through them all of the time to keep them regular. And it might seem like you could alleviate these problems by just giving them a diet with more accessible energy, but that is not the case. 
They are so adapted to this non-stop flow of low calorie fiber that a low fiber, high calorie diet will just lead to obesity, poor gut health, and death. As for foods, get the right ones and keep them flowing. Grass hay is your staple. Timothy hay is widely available and excellent, but other grass hays such as orchard, meadow, rye, barley, and oat hay are also excellent, and variety is great for a number of reasons. About 80% of the diet should be grass hay, and that should be available all of the time. Again, this is grass hay, not legume hay such as alfalfa and clover. Legume hay should not be offered to adult rabbits. Maybe it can be used sparingly for babies, but never, never for adults. And no straw, it has no nutrients at all. However, grass hay will provide energy and nutrients at appropriate levels, wear their continuously growing teeth, and will give them the fiber needed to keep the train moving. So that's 80% of what they should be eating. Fresh greens should be offered daily. This again is a, a good place to offer variety. Things like dandelion greens, collard greens, mustard greens, romaine lettuce, and celery. Kale can be added sparingly. As a reptile guy, I tend to avoid kale and especially spinach as they bind calcium. So consult an expert whenever considering a new form of greens to add. But Diversity, again, is key. This gets them some nutrients and water not available in the hay. Other vegetables and fruits can be offered as treats and as rewards while training. Just use them sparingly to maintain good weight and proper gut health. Generally avoid things like grains, nuts, beans, peas, and corn. Pellet diets can be offered, but only sparingly. These are no replacement for grass and greens. These are a lot of calories in a small, dry, low fiber space. If the gut train is full of this, you will have a fat, dehydrated, constipated rabbit. And when the train stops, so does your rabbit. Forever. So stick with grass, hay, and greens. In addition to water from greens, be sure that clean water is always available from a bottle or bowl that cannot be flipped. Okay, so that's food and water. I wanted to start there because you cannot get that wrong and hope to have a long-lived bunny. It will probably make it to the end of Easter morning, but you know, don't expect to have it next Easter. Now let's discuss their enclosure, or lack thereof. Rabbits are a lot like dogs in this way. They can be confined to an enclosure, especially a very large enclosure, but they need some time to run around as well each day several hours. This can be in your home or in your yard, depending on your situation. Now, the train is moving all of the time, or at least it should be, and they eat a lot of stuff that is difficult or impossible to break down, so they need to drop off the extras at the station fairly regularly. The good news is that they naturally like to use the same station, so they're fairly easy to litter box train. And the best location for their litter box is under them as they are eating so put it below their food. They like to load and unload at the same time like the trains at the airport. Bet you'll never look the same way to train again. And sometimes they like to load what they just unloaded, like when you get off at the wrong terminal and need to get back on. And just like getting back on a train from which you just disembarked, it can be a little awkward. But let's talk about it anyway. Many years ago, when I worked in the Pangani Forest at Disney's Animal Kingdom, I would, with some regularity, find myself in a position where I needed to assist a group of horrified guests that had just observed a gorilla, another herbivorous, non-ruminant mammal, consume its own feces. I didn't even need to see it happen. I knew just from the gasps and awkward laughing what had occurred. And that is when I would gather everyone around me with the important question, are rabbits cute? The answer was almost always unanimous that they are. And that is when we would discuss coprophagy. A word as important to add to your vocabulary as toxicognath, conglobate, or stinking rab. You see, plants are, as we have already discussed, full of energy that is difficult to digest. Some mammals, the ruminants, use multi-chambered stomachs that allow all sorts of symbiotic microbes to assist in digestion. They frequently regurgitate food back into the mouth for additional chewing to free up more of these nutrients to be addressed by the microbes. And thus they manage to extract enough energy to survive on a plant diet. Rabbits can't do this. They don't have a stomach like this. And they can't even hack up a hairball. So, Regularly brushing your rabbit can prevent gut blockages that can stop the train. The closest thing that rabbits have to the ruminant digestive system is a cecum. This isn't unique to rabbits, you have one too, but it is very important in rabbits. The cecum is similar in function to what we find in ruminants. It's 
just a place where microorganisms can break down and ferment plant material, thus freeing up energy and nutrients that were not available before. Now, the cecum is located in the large intestine, and food does not get into the large intestine until it is already passed through the small intestine. And most of the nutrients and energy are absorbed in the small intestine. It's too late. It needs to go back a stop. But the train only goes one way. Do you see where I'm going with this? Coprophagy! Rabbits offload two distinct types of passengers. Hard, round, indigestible waste, and softer, nutrient-rich, scrumptious little cecal deposits called cecotropes, which are all packaged up and ready to ride the train again like a kid on a carnival ride. So either eating your poop isn't that gross, or rabbits aren't cute. But you can't have it both ways because rabbits need to do this all the time. If rabbits deposit Easter eggs, by the way, they're probably just cecotropes. I'd like to take a moment just to give some greens to Pops here and to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who make content like this possible. We really, really appreciate all that you do for us. And we've got a lot of cool features. I gotta tell you, this video is going to have a pretty incredible Patreon extras video to go along with it because uh, <laughs> Will had a little bit of a problem with some of the discussion of our little train. So if you wanna see that, pop on over to Patreon and join us. When it comes to hardiness, we give the rabbit a score of three out of five. Rabbits can live well over a decade, they're hardy, but we've already discussed several ways that you might kill one very quickly. Unlike reptiles where something can be a bit wrong for a long time before it becomes serious, things can go sideways for a rabbit in a hurry. This is especially true if it breaks its spine or if the train stops moving. So have a plan for what to do and what vet to contact before you even get a rabbit. You don't want to be looking all this up while the train is already stopped. The term for what you're going to want to use with your vet or internet search is GI stasis. If you notice that your rabbit is not unloading passengers, or worse, not loading passengers, you need to act immediately. Contact your vet without any hesitation at all. This isn't something that could become life-threatening in a few days or weeks. Hours count. Proper diet and exercise greatly reduce the chances of this occurring, but it can happen to anyone with a rabbit, so be ready to act and always monitor the train. Signs of spinal damage include reduced mobility in the hind limbs, including laying down regularly with the limbs behind the rabbit. This is also a reason to contact your vet. Almost all non-spayed female rabbits will get uterine cancer, so that is a reason to get them spayed unless you intend to breed. Overgrown teeth can occur if their diet is not right, and this can cause them to stop eating. Respiratory infections can be common and serious as rabbits are obligate nose breathers. Head tilts can indicate ear and brain infections. There's just a lot that can go wrong and quickly. So form a relationship with your vet and have their number on speed dial if you want a long-lived rabbit. When it comes to availability, we give the rabbit a score of five out of five. It turns out that rabbits breed like rabbits. So every pet store has them. But so does every animal rescue from last Easter. So why not get one there? When it comes to upfront costs, we give the rabbit a score of three out of five. Rabbits are cheap, crazy cheap, and their food isn't expensive either. A water bowl, a litter box, rabbit safe litter, all fairly cheap. I would get a big enclosure and that will cost a bit. But more than anything, you need a savings for vet expenses unless you don't intend for your rabbit to last very long. And if all you want is a rabbit for Easter morning, why not buy this Dove chocolate bunny? You know that thing is amazing and way cheaper. Heck, you could get this costume for way less than a real rabbit and you could be the freaking Easter bunny. And you could get this second mask as a backup in case your kids have been a little too naughty for the nice Easter bunny to come this year. Or if you just want to reenact your favorite scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Run away, run away. Anyway, this is why we give the rabbit an overall score of 3.2 out of 5. Not a horrible score for a mammal, but a really bad score for a gift. And there are no vacations. This is your life now. Happy Easter. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. He's such a good boy. If rabbits deposit Easter eggs, by the way, they're probably just cecotropes. Easter is ruined. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
like quite. Different? Yeah, they're they're you you know they're they're much softer, shinier. Um, they they're not they're not so round. They really are. They look delicious. <laughs>